All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board meeting. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, January 16th, 2020. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, planning board members present tonight. We have regular member Frank Underwood absent tonight. It's Sean Winston also absent is the vice chair, Nicole Fecto. We have regular member Mike LaRue here and alternate uh, Dave Ross Lines. So Dave, you'll be uh, a voting member tonight with the two absences. Also, we have our code enforcement officer. Um, we also have our code enforcement technician. Uh, no, we have our planning technician. We don't have our code enforcement. We have our town planner here with our town planning technician slash website administrator slash Facebook administrator and concert promoter, James, and various members of the public. I'd like to open up the public comment session it is open to any resident or property owner in the town to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. We do have a public hearing tonight on an application on Portland Street. So uh, you will have an opportunity to, to talk as well during that time. And then we will have a final public comment session at the end of tonight's meeting. So if you um, would like to come forward, public comment session is open. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Tom Dupree. I'm a landowner down off Ridland Road, Narrow Gauge Lane. I have that piece of property down there, and right now we have two dwellings on it, and it's a private road, dirt. And I'm here tonight to see if we could get an amendment to the ordinance so I can add two more homes to it and keep it dirt. Um, I want to build my house down there, and hopefully one more from one of my, my boys. Um, so that's what I'm here to see if we can get that on to see if you guys can have an amendment to that, to that ordinance to go to four or five houses on a private road and keep it dirt. Keep all the structure just like you would a road, 20 feet wide, have any turnarounds that we would need, you know, make it stable just as good as we were going to tar it. We just don't want to tar it because, you know, it is to maintain a tar road. Um, it's hard enough to do it as a town with, you know, public money and, 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 you know, tax money and all that stuff. So when you have a private road, it's a lot easier for the residents on that road to maintain it. Environmentally impacting, now you've got a road that'll perk a little bit. We don't have water runoff. We're out in the rural, near you know, water and stuff like that. So we're minimizing any runoff. Um, so other than putting a tar base down, uh, it's gonna be just like a regular road. And it already is. It's a, it's a road that's been in since 04. Right. And if you were to drive down it now, you would say, well, that looks like it's ready for tar. Um, so I just wanna keep it as such. You know, so so it's we the can maintain. the cul-de-sac at the end, right? Uh, Hammerhead, and it's already on. Okay. It's already on a set of plans that yep. was uh, done by Easterly Surveying. Yep. So that's not the through road. That's a road off the through road. Yeah. So you're coming down off Ridland Road. Yes. And you go down by Winslow Woods. It's the next left narrow gauge lane. Yep. Originally, I put in a road about 800 feet long to Bob Briggs's first house, which has been sold, and then we extended it down mm -hmm. and then had it resurveyed, and that's where the Hammerhead would be at down at the end there. And there's, there's enough room halfway down to have another hammerhead if we needed to, but, um, and it's 20 feet wide all the way down. Had STS bringing out all the gravel. We have some six inch minus down at three feet. Then we come up a foot, then we get some three inch minus, and then we get crushed gravel. Like I said, the road's as stable as, you know, it'd be ready for tar. So that's all I want to do. And I'd like to get that, you know, <clears throat> on the board to get it done so I can build my house this year. That's, that's what I'm really shooting for, so. You know, Larry, I know South Berwick, they've gone to um, five on a private road. Yeah. Larry, this is something we could talk about later. H uh, have you been into the office at all to talk to James? Yes, I, or yes, I have. Okay. Yep. And actually, I was here a couple of years ago, and I presented it as such. And, you know, we were hopefully going to address it, but I'm sure some other stuff must have came up. But now I'm kind of, you know, chomping at the bit. So, so this is a land use ordinance change. So that actually takes a town meeting vote to actually change that. That's something that the board here cannot do, but the board can entertain your, your discussion points and they have to decide on whether or not something needs to move on to the ordinance. And James is just starting to assemble amendments to the ordinance. And are you working against the deadline, a, a date certain for those? Yeah, it's essentially um, 
February is about the time, about for the deadline. By the first first meeting, and then if we have to push to the to the second meeting in February, we can we can do that. Okay. Uh, while I'm thinking, Mr. Chair, is that that if uh, if James has had a chance to talk and Jennifer's had a chance to talk, we can we can discuss it a little bit later on as we because we are going to review the ordinance. Yep. Let's just go through public comment and okay. get through all the other stuff here on the agenda. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else for public comment session? You look like you want to get up. Okay. All right. <laughs> Seeing nobody else come forward, we'll close the public comment session. Moving on to the approval of the minutes for the January 2nd meeting. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Have a good night. I didn't have any comments on those <clears throat> day, and, and I didn't see anything that Paul would call out either, so. Two in a row. Building momentum. All right, if there's no other changes or uh, amendments, then the motion will be for the approval of the minutes. And I'll move we approve the minutes to the January 2nd uh, planning board meeting. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Abstaining. Okay. So we have uh, three yes and one abstaining. Moving on to the public hearing. This is a conditional use application, adult use marijuana storefront. The address is 513 Portland Street, map R72, lot 5. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is Tri-Can Alternatives. This is a public comment session only for this application, just to come forward and talk about any questions that you may have of the applicant that we can get to next in old business. If you have any questions, uh, I'll write them down, and then we'll address them here coming up in the uh, right next after old business. So public hearing is open. Okay, public hearing going once, going twice. All right, we'll close the public hearing. Next is in old business, conditional use application, adult use marijuana storefront, 513 Portland Street map, R72, lot five. It's in the RCI zone. The applicant is Tri-Can Alternatives, and I will turn it over to our town planner. Good evening. Um, so there is no memo for you this evening. It's um, my recollection and quickly talking with James, you did receive a memo from me on December 26th. Um, since that time, you did find the application complete. You set the schedule for the public hearing this evening, which you held. Um, we did do a site walk um, earlier this evening, and the board members that are here, other than the chairman, um, did attend the site walk um, and had some great questions for the applicant. And, um, uh, I'm sure if the applicant wants to talk a little bit about his um, the proposal again, if if you feel you need, uh, otherwise uh, it's in your hands. Okay, did you have anything from the? Um, I did not. I thought it was very positive. Site walk. Yep. Very informative with, with with what we got for responses to every question that we asked. So. You got to come on. You got to come on up. <laughs> our viewers at home are a very highly rated program on Thursday night. Sure. <laughs> So uh, I'm Aaron Barth, uh, Tri-Can Alternatives, uh, 513 Portland. Um, I really don't have uh, much to add uh, to what we really discussed at uh, the site, uh, unless somebody else has other questions that I might be able to answer. Did we? I think two weeks ago we asked you to just inform the police chief of your changes. So, Did you get that letter? Um, I, I gave James um, okay. uh, an email that I had sent. Uh, so you'll just put that in, in the record. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. And then I also uh, added in uh, just a statement from my uh, um, architect. Just yeah, I mean, I would add for you, Mr. Chairman, and the other board members are here, I think that um, the Mr. Barth's plan um, from a security standpoint of how the um, facility will function um, is very impressive. Um, certain door to go in, certain doors you can only go out, mm -hmm. um, how the flow of, of um, folks will operate in there, how his employees and where they're located would operate. Um, I thought it was um, very informative as, as they mentioned, but um, it's also very reassuring that there's a lot of security within the, the confines of the process that um, I think um, can put a lot to rest. 
So just refresh my memory. So because this is already an approved application, we don't have to do findings of fact or any of that. We, we just approve the application. No, we would still do findings of fact. Okay, so um, we don't have that prepared we yet. We would not have that tonight because, of course, I wouldn't and there's no know conditions. what the action or discussion would have been tonight. No conditions of approval. No. Nope. Okay. Well, pretty straightforward, but you would have your findings for the next meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? I will, I'm going to ask my pet question. Could you just give us a snippet of the status at the state level where the process, for, approval process is at for um, adult use retail? Sure. Yeah, well. So <clears throat> they've already started accepting uh, applications. In fact, I think uh, there's, we're somewhere like in the 60s, uh, <clears throat> plus or minus, uh, applications for storefronts um, and in the 20s, I, I think, for uh, adult or for um, cultivation. Um, and <clears throat> they're starting to do uh, site visits on some of the cultivation uh, uh, locations. Uh, I haven't heard anything regarding site visits yet on um, storefronts. Um, we're per, as far as we go, we're in contact with them on a weekly basis, just updating them <clears throat> as far as where we stand. Um, this will be the next update um, if we get approved. Um, and uh, uh, their statement is that uh, once uh, applications get approved by them, that uh, they are going to mandate a hold uh, on opening those storefronts until there's enough um, cultivation facilities uh, open and operating to supply uh, the demand that there's going to be. <clears throat> so, um, and, and I guess the state will uh, inform us as to when that'll be. Do you know if they have to be Maine-based cultivation? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hands down. Yeah, we can't go across state lines. Oh, I was thinking federal and all of that stuff comes into no, play. No, so. no, 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 Yeah, it's, yeah. All I'm, right, I'm so, the, app, so the, the motion would be for the approval of the application, and then in two weeks at our next meeting, then we would approve the findings of fact. I move that we approve the application. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Anybody uh, recusing themselves? Abstaining. Abstaining, okay. I want Paul to be part of the record. Okay, so that's uh, three yes uh, and then one abstaining from voting. All right, you're all set. And as I mentioned at our site visit, you don't have to attend for the findings of fact. That's just a perfunctory sure. thing that the board needs to do as part of the approval process. Sure. Yeah. Next on the agenda is uh, preliminary plan major subdivision 100 Old Pine Hill Road, map R44, lot 20. It's in the R1 and the R2 zone, and the applicant is NC Berwick, LLC. And I'll turn it over to the uh, town planner. You're, you're free to go. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am going to do a little bit of the uh, memo for you, but I'm also going to kind of jump off off the memo and have some discussion with you as well. Um, this is an application that's been before you several times at sketch level and is now um, the applicant is at preliminary level. The um, site consists of 15.59 acres. Um, the original lot itself was 40 acres. Um, the applicant is seeking subdivision approval for 16 lots with the creation of a cul-de-sac. Property is boundaried between R1 and R2 zones um, and identified on the plan based on the plan submitted earlier for the smaller subdivision, um, which has already been approved at the front portion of the property. Um, the R1 zone requires 10,000 square feet, minimum lot size, uh, minimum fronted, minimum frontages and widths of 100 feet and 25 foot setbacks and the R2 zone requires a minimum of 20,000 square foot lots with 50 feet of frontage and 25 foot uh, rear and side yard setbacks. Cluster subdivisions do not have a minimum lot size but do require 50 feet between buildings. Um, Berwick's ordinance requires lots greater than two acres 
that lie within more than one zoning district to adhere to the zoning requirements of the zone in which that property is located. This application has, has done that. The proposed lot um, will be assessed via existing private road known as Norman Court. This road currently provides access to four residential units and a business. The right of way width is 50 feet according to the tax map that was um, included as part of the um, survey and existing conditions. Um, there, the seven, there's a 75 foot setback from the streams, um, not shown on the plan, but approximate wetland locations are noted on the plan for you. Um, per Berwick's subdivision regulations, section 11.6, sewage disposal, any subdivision located within 1,500 feet of sewer line shall be connected to the sewer district's line. There is sewer available from Old Pine Hill Road. The applicant will connect to both public water and sewer. Underwood Engineering, um, Valerie Jaguer has not at this time provided the letter of review on the application and that will also be in my recommendation um, for you. Um, the applicant provided both a plan showing a cluster subdivision and a plan showing a conventional subdivision. Um, and that comes from, this is a clip from Kathy's memo. As I mentioned, um, she started the application several years ago now and I came in in the middle of it Frank as you're coming in later in the yeah. process um, so at some point in that process they did show um, a conventional subdivision um, and a cluster um, the 16 lot subdivision will generate about 9.57 trips per day per lot based on the Institute of Traffic Engineers standard um, plus the four house lots, um, which also generate 9.57 trips per day. That is a standard. That is not necessarily what occurs, but that is the industry standard that is used for, for that type of development. Based on that, um, it estimates that between 2.94 and 4 trips per day, um, which currently use the road for a total of 194 to 195 trips per day, assuming the actual car repair space is a thousand square feet so it's including the car auto repair facility that is down that road um, the applicants development will trigger chapter 500 and will likely require a site permit from uh, it will not require at this time a site permit from DEP but it does does require chapter 500 um, a wetlands wetland alteration permit which would be a tier one permit because of the amount of wetlands that are being altered other considerations, um, as part of the initial review, there has been no request for waivers, so it's difficult to know if any are going to be requested. The applicant has not submitted any kind of stormwater analysis, and I will address that for you in a minute. Um, as noted earlier in the report, the applicant will need to go to the Department of Environmental Protection for a Chapter 500 stormwater permit um, and a wetland alteration permit, not a DEP site location permit. The recommendation um, from staff at the time that this was written is that um, the site walk has already been performed uh, at the sketch level um, on several occasions, um, that the applicant has not submitted the stormwater narrative for review. The, applicant should be ta the application should be tabled by the board until the stormwater documentation has been submitted and the letter from the sewer district review be provided. This will give the applicant additional time to address the other issues such as um, the need for main DEP permitting. I have received um, the stormwater um, analysis, which I believe I turned over to James. I don't know whether it's been moved for you folks yet or not. Um, and I have had a chance to review that. I will say that um, Generally speaking, and I know you folks haven't seen it yet, from, an app, from a standpoint of completeness with the stormwater application, less um, Valerie Jaguer's letter, which could still come for final, the application could be found complete um, for the preliminary level. Now, that being said, um, I will say that this application has been very fluid, um, and I will say that the applicant has worked with me over the last week at trying to address issues. I'll let him go into a little more detail on um, what's going on behind the scenes, but um, he has been working very diligently to try and, and get this application to a point for your consideration. Um, when you're ready, I'll let the applicant speak to some of the other issues that have occurred. 
Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Paul Hollis, NC Burwick, LLC. Um, BJ did a great job presenting uh, where we're at at this point. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, we originally contracted a couple of years ago with an out-of-state um, engineering firm, Horizons Engineering, out of Littleton, New Hampshire. Uh, it turned out to be a mistake. It took uh, long, uh, it took months and months and months to get things done. They uh, finally um, they subcontracted with Atlantic Resources out of Freeport, Maine. Uh, we've decided to let Horizons go. Um, uh, free, uh, the company in Freeport, Atlantic Resources, will stay on board. But Ken Wood from ATAR Engineering has taken over the project. And uh, he'll be making, uh, when it comes time for him to be making the presentations for preliminary and final, he'll be the person doing that. Um, it's probably a decision we should have done months ago, but here we are. Um, we just got the stormwater reports. Finally, after screaming and yelling for the last two or three weeks, we got them today. Um, Lee Jay's had an opportunity to look at them. We don't think we're ready for preliminary, unfortunately. Uh, there's still some things that need to be done. The only thing that I can request uh, is that we'd be considered a, uh, our application complete uh, and then need to you know, get the, a few things that need to be get done uh, in order to qualify for a pro be ready for preliminary. We could just not act on this application tonight. We don't have to table it. We could just the, um, no, you can leave it open. You can postpone any action. Yeah, we're gonna, we could postpone chose. any action instead of so you can you can get everything that you need to have to come in here so we can do application complete. Can we determine completeness? Well, we'll discuss that. Yeah. That's all. You've got some questions, I yeah, know. Yeah, I had, I had some questions. I mean, I'm, I understand this has got a, a, a life to it that's been moving. Um, and you're changing engineers, and it's ATAR Engineering that you're ATAR, going to? I think you know who they are. I, 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 Frank, yes, uh, I, I know that. Ken firm. Wood. Yep. Um, I've been with front, uh, Ken for 22 years and um, finally threw my hands up at the other engineers and decided to... I, uh, I just know that it. when we adopted in our land use ordinance cluster developments, um, we had a pretty detailed performance outline of submissions and Pages comparisons. 80, and 8 8, yeah. eight, eight, eight correct. Eight, yep. um, I have it in front of me. And what I would what I would like to do is when you sit with Mr. Wood, have that section in front of you, because to, before I would. Uh, um, make a vote on completeness, I would want to understand that all these items in here, the two plans, the cost analysis, the cost impacts. Um, the other thing in here is that the soils survey, I believe was a high intensity. Um, I would like to have some more notes added to the plan. Um, okay. In particular. You have a who, list by any chance? Oh, uh, well. Eight, eight. Eight, well, eight. I know. I, 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 <laughs> it's basically eight eight. Okay. But on there, if if uh, the uh, report that I saw referenced some Mays Environmental Services dated February one two thousand eighteen, that stated that a HIS a high intensity soil survey had been performed, and the report is available, and there's a map. I would like, and, and it's been submitted. Do we have that in the file? Um, uh, I'm sorry, I was thinking of something while you were speaking. The HISS, all the, all the high-intensity soils work that was performed. I'm going to make sure that's in the file. I believe that one of the plan, the colored plan that I think is right there, has that, has the soils identified on it and has a list of what they are. And I want, but I, we should have that report. That report should be referenced as a reference document on this plan. Um, also on this plan, you spell out the R1 and the R2 criteria at the very bottom. You know where that line changes. But you don't have that line shown right. on the drawing. Right, right. Okay, we need the line shown on the yep. drawing. And then the last thing, the whole difference between... It was, on the, it was actually on the conventional one. It's not on this one, you're right. But the whole, the whole comparison to allow you to go forward with a cluster is based on that net density calculation? It's on the bottom of the plan. It's not on there. It doesn't show the areas of so soils that are well-drained. Right it's, it's, is it in that one? It's right there. Yeah. All right, I'll go back and look at the set yeah, that I have. Because I want to make sure the math is correct, that we've been allowed so much for, because there's a for formula in here to be met. Okay. Do you want to look at it now? Or? No, no, because okay. but those are the that's the that is the cluster calculation. That's the level of detail I want to assure ourselves that we have done that. And and like I said, 
when you have those two plans, there's also a cost comparison for infrastructure that's supposed okay. to be presented, and there's also a, a cost comparison of impacts, meaning to town services and stuff, because the whole idea about the town being able to give you that cluster development or approve that is that we're going to be realizing some savings down the road and we're not building out all kinds of roads that go, you know, 300 foot frontages and all of that stuff. So there's a, there's a reason behind these two plans need to be compared. And I want to make sure we've got all those comparisons in the file. Can, if, if we, uh, of course, um, you know, Kenwood's pretty yeah, familiar I know with Ken, all yeah, this. Yeah. Um, if we put all that together, uh, is it possibly you can review it for the next plan before we officially come back into a planning board meeting? I mean, the idea is, I know if it's if it's been put together, it's been put together well by Adder Engineering. Right. I know them. I just want to kind of use Section 8. I just don't want to come back to the board. I mean, I've been here, and this isn't your fault. It's my fault. <laughs> but I just kind of want to use Section 8.8. .8 as a checklist to right. go down through. So as we go down here, we can check this paragraph off because, I mean, it's, this is a unique request that requires a level of documentation. Yeah, I, I would say that um, for the applicant that um, between yourself and Ken, um, those communications ought to go through staff. Yes. And that the yep. board would then react to that information at the board meeting. It's not, it's not Frank's responsibility to communicate directly with Is that you. more of a workshop going through that? No. I mean, no, just no, no, you just give the information to, to staff and staff will deal with it. We get emails from them all the time during the week. Okay. And then the last comment I offer up is that you show on there lots that say open space on there. I was going to bring that up the next. Every single one of those lots has to be a lot of record. Correct. Mm -hmm. And they have to be dedicated out, out of the out of the subdivision as no further subdivision, no further right. building on so, it. So, right, if you look in, uh, we, oh, <coughs> why don't you take that one? There's just a couple questions that I have for you. So in 16 here of C, uh, it says, if a cluster development is proposed within a residential den density, at least twice the density of adjacent development in, in existence, or at least twice the density permitted in the land use district, which it is, this is twice the density. And on Halflinger, those houses, the Halflinger borders these back these these lots when you first come in on the right. Right. Uh, have you considered the twenty five foot buffer, buffer zone? To Halflinger? No, on the at the so. <clears throat> if those criteria is met, okay, the first twenty five feet of the buffer strip, as measured from the exterior boundaries of the development, shall contain evergreen shrubs, trees, fences, walls, or any combination which forms an effective visual barrier Did to be located. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. A 25 foot buffer zone. Okay. Is it required? Well, I, yeah, and I live in a I live in a cluster development, and it's required. So it's required as part of the cluster. It's required, and basically, you just don't cut the trees down. Yeah, you okay. don't clear cut all the way. That's fine. You just leave it natural. So, the, yeah. so the last 25 feet, I know it cuts into their backyards, but the last 25 feet of the neighborhood that I live in, you can't do anything up to the property line. Okay. Right. Um, and then, like Frank was saying, with the common space. It has to be a separate lot, and you can either do a couple things with that. You can give the lot and maintain, the homeowners association would maintain that, which would be a burden for them. Or I know in the development that I'm living in, on both sides of the road, there's 22 acres and there's six acres that was deeded to the town as public space, and the town accepted that. And the town has sole responsibility, and it's under their insurance. Do you think that would qualify for the town Absolutely. to consider accepting that? Thank you. Basically, it, you have to account for the full 37 acres, and there'll never be another lot put in there. Right. That's how that goes. Uh, Frank, 19 acres of this has been put into another entity that I have no control over. Uh, we started with 37 acres. 19 acres has been put aside, um, and we're going with our six. We're going with our 15.59 acres. Then that raises an important question to me: If that 19 has been put aside, does is that been put in open space for perpetuity, meaning he can never do anything with it? Uh, if I don't, uh, if I don't own it or have any control over it, is it required if I don't own it? Or yes, don't have any yes, it, it is because you're taking advantage of that acreage, isn't he, to develop the standard, the standard lot? I mean, did he come up with his 16 lots using a conventional? subdivision, a standard subdivision for the full 37, and now has decided to boil that down. 
I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out how we got to that original 16. Did, what did he use for density calculations for? I have to look at that plan, Frank. I mean, we haven't that's why I'm confused, because I see the extra 50-foot right-of-ways that are kind of punched out to go into that big track of land. But technically, if that was used to use... The open space area, based on the, the 16 lot calculation that's on this plan, the open space calculation was based on the total 15.59 acres, which is the acreage that he's developing. And of that, um, open space requirement is 30 percent, or 4.68 acres, which is what you see being held in perpetuity as open space relevant to that. What should occur, but we've exce though, we've exceeded that, though. Which, which, yes, but what should occur, though, is that that other parcel should be shown in whole to be considered, and not a lot in the subdivision, but to be considered so that the um, board sees that parcel as a whole. Well, the other side to it, too, is he can't leave it as a landlocked piece. He's got to have some agreement by which access to that can be gotten. Well, again, until you see it in a hole, as a hole, um, I don't know exactly where that acreage is, but there certainly is an opportunity at the end of this road to extend that road through. Okay. So, um, and he does not control that land at this point. So when I look at the calculation here for net residential density. It should not include the additional 19 acres. It only includes, it's, it's based on that. So the soil discounting for well drained and, and, and I mean poorly drained and all that has been, has been laid out. I believe it has. I mean, I, I, I apologize for not looking at that, but. Um, total open space proposed 5.8 acres, 50% requirement um, is 2.9 acres, 1.67 acres for wetlands, 4.3 acres outside of wetlands. Um, all we're all deducted from that. So, wetlands or soil classifications? Wetlands. It, isn't it based on soil classifications? As Again, I haven't looked at the soil classifications. They all could be great soils. We don't. They know could that. be could be a gravel pit. Exactly. <laughs> so we don't know that okay. without that table telling us exactly. Okay. That's why I'm hesitating on giving a completion because I want to make sure that that checklist in 8.8 mm -hmm. has been has been fully vetted to the point where we've got everything that we we need. I agree. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So I think mm -hmm. we're in consensus here that we're not going to act on this. We're not going to take any action on this tonight. Until we submit the things that uh, yeah. Frank has yeah, and sit, questioned. And, 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 had an opportunity and have Ken go through 8.8 .8 and, and look at everything that you've got in your files that you got from Horizon or whoever you got information well, from. Well, I'm going I'm to leave it to Ken. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you're going to do two <clears> things, <throat> Paul. You're going to have Ken communicate with me on the technical aspects, and I'm going to want to see that information, and then you're going to also submit it to the town, to James, um, so that we have it either for the next meeting or the meeting after yeah. that. So we'll just go time. through the whole checklist of 8.8. .8 yes. And have Ken respond to each yes. have requirement. Ken have Ken, yes, and have and, Ken And put the plan you. accordingly uh, with the chance of maybe getting completeness after that. Correct. Okay. And have okay. Ken communicating with me on that. I will. And I really want to know how that other 19 acres is going to be Well, it sounds to me like left. that's been, de I'm, I'm not going to speak for him, but it sounds to me like that's been deeded out. That's no longer his. I, I, but it I, should be shown, the perimeter of the boundary should be shown on right, the plan. Right, right. I and then any of those other open spaces <laughs> that are going to stay within his Correct. 15 acres or 16 acres needs to be a deeded lot. I think, I think the question here is, it's been deeded out, but can it be deeded back? I think that's the question. Can he do something with it later on if he, who is it deeded to? I need to verify if it was even deeded. You know, it's dedicated it's dedicated to another entity, which is my lender on this process. I need to go check to find out if it's been deeded to them. Yeah, we, I, I think right, it has. There's too many questions. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We need to I think find we know that. what we need yeah, to do, yeah. so we'll, thank and you. You guys can sort that out. Yep. We'll thank sort you. it all out, and uh, Ken will be here for the uh, – we'll get everything for, to um, Lee J uh, and for Mr. Underwood, and then we'll uh, – be here for the one we think we're 100% ready. We'll be back. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
Next on the agenda in new business is a conditional use application, adult use marijuana storefront and adult use marijuana production facility at 569 Portland Street, map R72, lot 9-1. It's in the RCI zone and the applicant is Straight Fire Farms. And I'll turn it over to Lee J, Mr. Town Planner. <laughs> Straight Fire. Mr. Fix-It. Uh, the applicant is seeking to construct 2,945 square foot floor addition to the rear portion of the existing building shown on the attached plan. Rear plan. The current structure is 5,072 square feet, bringing the total building area to 8,017 square feet. At this time, the applicant is not proposing any new parking spaces for the added square footage. If you break down the required number of parking spaces, it would look like the following. I'm not going to go through it, but you have it in the memo um, highlighted for you. Um, the applicant would be in need of an additional seven parking spaces based on my calculation, and I'm going to get into that a little bit here. A previous plan submitted by the applicant includes six grow rooms, um, and I'm completely baffled by the application. Um, it's just what the application is seeking approval for because we have a hand-drawn plan that says six grow rooms. There's another plan that shows some retail space, but there's nothing on the site plan that you have that tells us exactly what's going on there um, or even where the entrance to the facility is. Um, I would suggest that before I provide any additional guidance to the board on this matter that you should bring the applicant before you, which they're here tonight, and get complete clarification of what they're seeking approval for and provide guidance to them on what you would like to see from them in order to move the application forward. Thank you. All right. Turn it over to you. Just state your name for the record. Yes, I'm Paul Blanc with MJS Engineering representing the Straight far Fire Farms. Um, we did receive that letter. Thank you for writing that letter and doing the review. Um, both applicants are here in the audience today, owners of the facility. Um, Can you just we, raise your hands? Okay, thank you. Just so I know. <laughs> so, um, after we re, um, received that letter, we did make um, revisions to the plan um, to include the additional um, seven parking spaces that are required. Um, we also included a James is going to pass out some packets. Thanks. Um, we also included a where the rooms would be for the grow facility. We also included the entrances to the building. This is an existing building. Out. Um, I don't know if anybody's passed this before. This. Go ahead. I, uh, is this the motorcycle? The original Harvey motorcycle shop, way way back. Okay. It is. So it's an existing building in. So we did include um, the entrances now on the new plan. Um, this space in the back there is where the grow house will be. It will be completely separate from the retail business. They'll have a separate entrance there. Mm -hmm. Some of the additional information, and I apologize for bringing it in late, is um, broken down each part the requirements for the conditional use, um, which includes the security, waste disposal as a dumpster location, um, a noise, a, this also goes into the storm water, um, low impact statement, um, traffic patterns, a letter from the security, as well as a letter from the police chief, um, dated January 9th. Um, we also had Joseph no Joe Noel go out there. He's going to be doing the septic design. The septic will be relocated. He did test pits. He did this on January 11th, um, and we now have that information. The Jay, question: This <clears throat> yes. this is also a grow facility, right? In the back room. In the be, back. Yes, correct. Okay. So the only change that you're looking to make is the expansion to have the uh, to have the adult use sales and an additional grow room. Co correct. Okay. Well, I don't know that that's correct. At least, I mean, the previous plan that we have 
shows a fairly large building that's going to be built on the back, which I'm assuming, based on this revised plan, is the grow rooms. That is, so, so, uh, is, that, is that correct? That is correct. All right, so that just that brings up my question about odor control plants because that, was there previous growing going on there before? No? Okay. All right. So then, yeah, I mean, there does have to be odor control plans as well as part of this application. Mm -hmm. There's no marijuana use at all on this associated with this property? No. No. Okay. Okay. Is that something that you've been looking into, the odor control plan as well? Um, it needs to be. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 oh, Ron is here, and he could speak sure. to that. That would be great. Hi, I'm Ron Fosick, um, and I own property in town and in South Berwick, actually. Um, so what we're doing is we're contracted out with the ocean heating and cooling, and they're going to provide odor control. We're going to do it in the vault in the store, uh, above any entrances, um, in the drying room, you know, or the trim room. So anywhere that is a hot spot, and we can provide you with that. I just wanted to make sure, I didn't want to have a plan and not be the right plan. Um, this is the first time I've gone through this process, yeah. so I apologize that the permit wasn't correct when it first went through. We brought Paul in. That's all right. That's why we're here to help and <laughs> tell you what you need. Clear. So, yeah. James is very well versed in looking at filtration and, and odor control plans. So, uh, definitely touch base with James and with Jennifer as well, and they can point you in the right direction and exactly what is required by the town. Yeah, ordinance. no, we, I have yep. all the information I need. So, next is, time you see us, we'll have a full blown plan. Is there an existing HHE 200 for a septic system, subsurface system for the, what's it called, the repair shop now? There, there's an existing system there now. And Joel is going to add a entirely new system associated with this? Okay. Yeah, he's, he's going to, he went back there and did test pits and based on the soils. The soil lines that you see right now for NRCS. So he went out and did some test pits here and he found that this would be the best location back here. Um, we'll go out and actually get the actual location. In the few, it, he just did it about on Friday, was it? Yeah, the 11th. So yeah. Well, you got to talk, hear. just, just uh, flip that microphone around so they oh, can hear Oh, sorry. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I think the, the question, though, is, is that septic system going to be a new one to handle the entire site? And then so. Yes. E either either way. I mean, I guess I'd like to. You've got an existing one. It may be too small for everything. No, we're actually we have to move it. Oh, you have to move it for the yeah, building. So we're eliminating it. Brand new overkill. So it's sized for. If you look, Frank. If you look where the building is, it's, it's, the one that's there. Yeah. Was, was, they can't. They can't hear you. You got to come up Mike. to the podium. Yeah. I'm sorry. You got to pretend that we're on TV because we are. It's the TV are. that can't hear Frank, <laughs> if you. Frank, if you look yeah. at the back side of this where the new building footprint is, okay. is where his septic, it would go right on top of the septic. That's why they're moving it. Mm. That's right. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, the okay. one that's there right. was built years ago, but it was overkilled for what we did plus because we had intended on uh, potentially uh, growing and we never did. So so it's it's kind of a shame, but okay. that's the way it is. The only other part that I would ask your Joel to look at, I know Joel, um, is whether or not there are any holding tanks that are required as a result of any washdown or any waters like that that would come off of this grow facility. You know, we, we did look into that briefly, and I don't think so. But if he could just render a, a comment on that, it's in his wheelhouse. There, there is something. There is a rain garden or something that they've that they've designed. I'm for talking about the wastewater side from process water. It. That's yeah. within the building. We'll figure it out. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll take care of that with Joel. I, mean, uh, I don't think there's going to be, but I did, but we'll make sure for the loads on the on the system. And then the only other question I would have is going forward, how much notification do we have to give North Berwick as an abutter for hearings and meetings and things along that line? Are we obligated, or is it just a cur neighbor courtesy? I own the adjoining property to it. So I'm a different town, but I in don't North know. Berwick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we would. Yeah, um, I think there is an obligation to notify the town, um, different than um, the subdivision, which would cross town boundaries. Mm -hmm. I think we just have to send the town notification. Well, the only reason I bring it up yes. is because of this potential South Berwick thing sure. that you guys have gotten the works for yes. us down on that 
South Berwick line. Yeah, <laughs> okay. that, that's a little different, but yes, I believe the state law does require that um, notification be given to the town. Okay. Um, of of a public hearing. Okay. I'm good at this point. Sure. Any other questions? All right. So, you guys have any questions for us? You know what you need to do and what we're looking for. We do, and we appreciate. You know, yeah. it's been an honor. It's really good. James has been great. Lee's been great. So we've been wondering about him. We right, will Lee, so. probably come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jury was out for a while. Wasn't Thank it? you all. <laughs> Make sure we let the town manager know. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> James, are you? Thank you. Yeah. Buying these guys lunch and stuff like that. <laughs> Coming in here, giving out these uh, sorry, accolades. My, on the record, he he he's been huge to talk to on the phone. Good. Are, awesome. are you Harvey? Paul I Harvey? Yeah, I remember you from. Yeah, from I, 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 how you doing? Pretty good. Nice to see you. Again. I remember when you first came in. <laughs> how long have you been sitting there? Uh, only for about what eight weeks? Yeah. Something like that. I, 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 but you were way before, right? Eight, eight weeks for 14 too long. years. <laughs> you know? I'm actually filling in for Paul Bobert, who's been on the board for 42 years. I, I remember you. you yeah. All right. All right. Block, right. We got to we got to stay on schedule when, here. When, so when I was young, I was busy. he accuses me of going into the weeds, I can't. Ah, there you go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you, guys. If Thank you. Have you. These. I think it's more of an observation <laughs> than an accusation. Turning into a selectman meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Pun intended. Uh, yeah. All right. So next on the agenda is uh, a few of the land use ordinance amendments that James put together. Now, James, this looks like you just touched up a little bit of. What we went over two weeks ago. I'm assuming this is a whole ordinance for me. That's for you, yeah. Okay, and I'll get the notebook back to. Was it half? Was it half the ordinance we gave you? You gave me your brown notebook, and I thought it had the whole thing. I'll give it back to you. Okay. <laughs> um, I just the the big piece is, I tried to change the from the actual number of permits, because the number of permits could end up being different depending on if there's an application that comes in say may the permit number is not going to be exact so the whole idea is to cap it at the number of permits granted so that's trying to that's that paragraph so it says the number of conditional use permits granted in each zone as of june 9 2020 shall be the limit of permits granted in each zone the number of conditional use permits in each zone shall be tracked and monitored by the town of berwick Community Development Planning Office. So to me that, I mean, I, BJ and I had a little talk about that earlier today, and it might not be as concise or obvious as what I'm you know, trying to So basically what you're saying is that anything that was granted prior to June 9th of 2020, that's it? Yeah, that's whatever, whatever's in, that's the- I that's guess that makes cap. sense, yeah. because that's you can have somebody comes in two weeks before June. Based on the ordinance passing at town meeting. Right. Yeah. And the amendments to the ordinance. Yeah. So that's that's that one. Um, are we good with good with that? I was fine with that. There's one downtown, right? It's, that was medical. Correct. It's, it's only going to be medical. Only one yeah. downtown. Yeah. 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 Are you taking any public input as we go, or can I say something at the end? Maybe. We're going to have a public comment session at the end. But do you have something that relates to this? Well, I do, so uh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't want to No, come on. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, my name's Jody Rogers. I'm at 420 Portland Street. So we've been um, operating a medical cultivation facility there for years. Um, if I understand this correctly, we're, we're kind of in a quandary right now because the way the ordinance is written, we cannot even apply for a conditional use yet. We're hoping with the ordinance possible changes that might come about in June that we would be able to apply for an adult use. So if this is saying that you're capping the, the permits based on what's requested prior to the ordinance, that precludes us from having an opportunity at that, if I understand that correctly. That's correct. So I, we have approached these folks and said, hey, can we come before the board for conditional use? And they said no because you're, it's because of the school proximity. I mean, the building itself is about 800 feet away, but our property lines are, in fact, 500 feet away. My understanding was that some of that was going to be discussed as possible, um, taming that a little bit for a daycare versus a school, or if there are mitigating factors such as geographical barriers between them, visibility, things of that nature. So. Um, 
I mean, I would certainly hope that there's some room for conditions such as ours that we would be right out of the gate. I mean, well, we can't, you can we can't always, do anything. You can always, if, if, the, if we decide to vote on this mm -hmm. and forward it to the selectmen and the selectmen decide to put it on the, on the, the town warrant, mm -hmm. you know that then you wouldn't be able to, to do that, right? So why, <laughs> you come in on May 15th and put it in an application, right? And if the changes then happen with the 500 feet, with the less than 500 feet, then you'd be fine with those changes, correct? Right, but my understanding is that we can't, we can't apply for a conditional use permit until we comply with the ordinance. So as long as we're in contrast to the spirit of some aspect of the ordinance, we can't, we can't even apply. Okay, I think I'll take a shot at it. Here. Okay, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a catch-22. Yeah, I guess that's a good, that's a good point. And I mean, I'd be comfortable adding a provision that allows, because you're effectively, whatever we want to call it, you're a non-conforming non use. But the whole point is to allow them to come back to planning board since you're growing marijuana there anyways, to be able to in basically increase your use, improve your building, and have the chance for the planning board to have you see what I'm saying, Lee? Yeah, I think I, um, Jen and I were just talking about it. I mean, I think that um, you can anybody can apply for anything. Correct. So they could submit an application. You can't act on it. Correct. Until officially act on it until the ordinance is changed. Correct. Because if they came before you prior to the ordinance being changed, you'd have no choice but to deny it. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But if the ordinance changes and they're able to then comply, their application will, will already be in the works, um, but you will have not taken action on it. And if the ordinance <clears throat> changes through town vote, then, then you would be in a position, as they would, to be able to approve that application. So they can apply any time they want. Correct. It's just not going to get acted on. But let me ask you, what, what is the real question? Well, I, got, I got something. Ready? So if we just say, if we just change that date to July 1, 2020, right, so that... Which would be the start of the... Listen, I don't, I really don't like getting into, and I want to help, mm -hmm. I want to help you out. I don't like getting into I hear you. creating land use ordinance for one person. Right, I'm just, so... I, I, they'll take offense to that. I'm just saying, because well, it's I, set... I don't know if it affects anyone. It sets a, well, it sets a standard for other people in the town who come before us when they come up and they request something. We've already had one request tonight. You could see that that person wanted that to happen. So I, I think instead of the July 1 necessarily, you could just uh, submit an application in the end of May and not ask to come on the agenda until when is the town meeting? The 8th? 9th. 9th? Okay, but, that's possible. My understanding was I couldn't submit stuff and stuff. But there again, I... We're not acting on it. They, they wouldn't act on it. It would just sit sit but, in the office until, you know. But if the ordinance did not get approved, then we're out of luck. you're out of luck. It's, but if it does get approved, then the application could go forward. It, it's not the use that's in question. It's the, the proximity correct. to the school. Correct. Uh, well, it, but it, technically, it does become the use because of the proximity to the school. Right, and I'm not, again, I'm trying to learn about some of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, is that metric, that 1,000 feet or whatever, is that from the state or is that imposed at the local levels? Local. That's, that's imposed the local. State, the state says... you got to go up to the... Sorry. So the state mandates uh, 500 feet from a school. Um, you know, we this, set a higher standard. You back said when. you can you can set a more strict standard. You just can't Correct. be less than that. So Berwick took the position that they wanted a thousand feet from schools. You guys added daycare as well, which is which is really what the the functioning um, facility that we're talking about is. Um, it 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 is a. I know it sounds five hundred feet sounds close, but it is it is property line to facility so um, depending on where your property line is you have you have to be that far away from their property but line. nothing would prevent you from building to within the setback line in the future of that property line I mean I, so I don't think you can use the the building property line m metric I would be concerned about that mm -hmm. the other thing I'd be more concerned about is when we did set it 
Did anybody, and is, it that the, is that the Montessori school that's down there? What's no. the daycare No, thing? it's a daycare. Is, um, I have actually it's on the right. I, I guess I would really want to look into, during the public hearing on the ordinance, whether anybody came out. No. And spoke on that This was a recommendation. I believe this was a recommendation by, our, by John Stoll, our former town planner. But I'm talking when it was originally set at 1,000. Do, do we I know remember. Yeah. We, I remember. Okay. I was here. That was, done, that was done when John was here. I, I, okay. I'm, all I'm saying is that you, if at that time you set it at 1,000, you did have abutters that were I'd have to go back and I'd have to look at the meeting. I would want to make sure we, we aren't going to kick that sleeping dog again if we look like we're... Well, trying to make this thing certainly research to all. look at the minutes from back then um, or I talk with John all the time about issues yeah. in the town he's in now um, so I can have that conversation with him as well and, and rattle his recollection just understand that Berwick has been ahead of the curve um, on this issue more so than many other towns and so I suspect at the time that a thousand feet was pulled out of the air, if you will, or pulled as the buffer, it was because we didn't know what was going on. The town, you know, who knows what was going on with, with marijuana grow and, and the whole bit. And, and this community was far ahead of the curve than many other towns. A lot of towns are at 500 feet. Um, they haven't gone beyond that. But, um, you know, Berwick was, was way out in front of this thing. But yes and no, but it was, a, it was a quick hurry up because I remember there was a lot of facilities that were going in and we needed to get something put together right away and we spent right. a lot of time on at least having something. Right, we had three, including... Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would want to look back at that only because it could be, the answer could be, well, when we did it originally, nobody came out and contested it. Right. Oh, we could go back I to I mean, it's minute. just yeah. a matter of making sure we're lining things up and being <clears throat> consistent. Sure. And we're going to have to have another public hearing on this anyway. Yeah. Okay. I mean, my recollection is that you guys were trying to put some parameters in place so that it wasn't a, an overabundance of these places. Correct. So I think you were looking for ways to kind of keep some distance right. and reduce the number that was possible. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think my argument would just be that if it is really, I mean, daycares don't even have to be in there. Some, some towns put a 200 foot or a 300 foot from daycares. Um, so. I think it's about 50-50 split on, on municipalities that are doing 500 for schools versus but from, 1,000. But from day one when we voted our land use ordinance in in the 80s, and it was, it was in, it was out, it was in, it was out, it was in, it was out, it was in. That's how many votes we took to, to deal with it. It was always presented as a neighbor-friendly mm -hmm. ordinance, meaning that if we would listen to anybody that came in that had an immediate concern from being a qualified abutter. So, again, I just w want to walk carefully with it yep. and not look, make it look like we're setting this thing up that we're going to act on it anyway. I want to make it kind of look like it's, it, it, does fit the, it does fit the rhyme or reason by which we can amend an ordinance and make it work everywhere in Route 4 and Route 9. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. route work everywhere. Route yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and I, I think the only concern was there was no way around that. So if there were reasonable you know, foundation for why it shouldn't apply necessarily in every single case that way. There's, there's no way to circumvent that except by the ordinance. Well, system. just to get back to our ordinance, back in 86, there were people out there that dug holes just to say they had already started their project. And what was interesting is there was a company that did aerial photography and they had flown the whole area on spec and the town got a copy of the aerial photos that showed no hole. <laughs> No trees cut or anything. So, I mean, we, it's been an issue in town, the whole ordinance. So. All right, thank you, ma'am. Anything else, James? Uh, two things. Um, one thing, one simple thing. Uh, I'd like to float the idea out and think about it and drive down Route 4 is reducing the front setback from 50 feet to 35 feet. You've got, I mean, I've, I've, I've been contemplating thinking about proposing like contract zoning. Uh, I think re reducing the front setback kind of uh, accomplishes the same kind of goal because you're you have the railroad track, you get a CMP easement, so reducing that front setback can allow for additional development. And if you look at the early, the, the closer South Berwick side front setbacks, you got you get a house that's five feet on Route Four. I don't want to even look at it until we address that road and the speed limit and the traffic concerns on it. I couldn't even think of putting more businesses on that road right now. It works in South Berwick because 
they drop down to 25 miles an hour. You do 26 miles an hour, you get pulled over. I, I wouldn't be in favor of that right away on Route 4. You're talking about Portland Street. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't be in Remember I mentioned last time that we got to engage the main DOT about some type of traffic uh, traffic pattern. I, I, I mentioned that on Route 4. Yes. Um, I saw the videotape. Okay. I've All right. Conversations with Tom Reinauer from yeah. CACS. Okay. I like I like what you're saying, but I just think I couldn't imagine more traffic pulling out onto Route Four and pulling in and stopping. It was just I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm getting old because I don't like to drive out there. I just like, <laughs> no, I'm like I go out there and I'm just like you like driving in though? <laughs> although you would be the potential of adding additional trips to that area because of additional building. Um, the idea of pulling the setbacks closer to the road also visually helps slow traffic down because all of a sudden they feel like they're going through a tunnel so if the car if the if the buildings are way back and there's a lot of open spaces just this feel of freedom go when you pull the buildings closer yeah. um, we had that situation a little bit different because it was in town but up in the community that I worked for for years and years and years we we pulled buildings to the front and had parking to the rear on a major um, state road. And in the area where a lot of development happened when we did that, it became a tunnel effect. And you can see cars literally slowing down coming through that section of that road because um, they're feeling much more confined. Following that thought, is signage another way to help slow things down? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Stuff for people to read. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, without being too much signage, you got to right, be ma'am. really careful about that. But right. um, yes, and you had one more. Uh, it was just the whole um, private road, gravel road. So right now, it's after the second house it requires paving. Um, so if we go to three houses or four houses, um, I mean, I like, I really do like the idea of. A lot of the times it's families that want to add houses onto their those private roads. So I really like the idea of allowing that to happen. Um, but our, from our, our side, once you start adding a third house or a fourth house, you get these dirt roads that get in, to become disrepair. Mm -hmm. And then the, then the, um, the neighbor, neighborhood uh, starts, you know, will the town take over the road and it becomes a life safety issue. So before... Um, you know, allowing that, how do we put in those safeguards? But also my, my biggest concern is that you go from two houses to say, say it's four. Um, now you're adding two houses to every, every dirt road. We are starting to kind of inventory our, our roads and seeing maybe it should wait for that to kind of, cause I'm, I'm wondering. We're actively doing that right now. Right. We're 13 roads in. <laughs> There's about a million roads. But the roads. town doesn't accept those roads. No, they'd have to be, well, that's one thing. But um, my, my main concern is if we go from two to four, that's two additional house lots that, get, that can be built on all these private roads. Mm -hmm. How many private roads are there? Right. Are there? Are there 10? So it's 20 more houses, but also they're probably in our rural areas. So what's the effect of 20 more house lots in a rural area? It might be more expensive than what it's worth doing. So, Well, the other side of it is the people want it then to be brought up to a town standard and the town take it over and plow it, and so the school bus will go down there. and right. we, So it we, opens we, up a whole we, yeah. bailiwick. We, we've had that conversation as well to talk about that because, I mean, I, I too don't have a problem um, if, if they want to be um, dirt roads and they're private. It's when someone petitions to have it taken over by the town, which is really out of a lot of people's control. So the idea needs to be that if you're going to allow that, then we really need to make sure that they're constructed to a standard, even as a dirt road, that one will be um, hold up better, two, that will be wide enough to still allow emergency vehicles to get down there, and three, somehow some sort of maintenance plan so that we know they're going to get graded in the spring because that, too, is an emergency vehicle issue um, that the town would not have any control over. I mean, before we go down that road, I would think a work session because, I mean, it's mm -hmm. going to fall in the selectmen's mm -hmm. bailiwick. It's going to be the chiefs of the, of the police and fire. Yep, I agree. 
Um, so a work session or something. And the other thing is, is this gentleman that came in here with a public comment, the first one, Tom Brigman or whatever his name was, what, that's a dirt road, private road that he's on. Is, is, is this in line with what he was asking? I mean, do you know exactly what he's asking yeah, for? Yeah, so there's two houses. I think it's narrow gauge. Narrow gauge. And he yeah. wants to go to four, which would add two house lots. And he said he, it's built up to a, a, a good standard. Um, so you're, repre you're, you're talking about something that's, that he has represented that he'd like to be considered. He's, Correct. He's yeah. engaged that through the, through the planning office. But we, Jen and I, we, it's, it's a never, like, it's always coming up, these, these private dirt roads. I'm going to pull this forward. I can't. Okay, I'm going to pull this forward. I'm going to speak on this, and I'm going to speak on this so you understand where we're at on it. So James and I have been talking about this a lot. And um, so Tommy said, well, it's family. And so my question was, okay, so if we let everybody build on a dirt road and we let your family live there, which I think is a great idea, um, what happens in a year when family sells the house or someone gets relocated two years and they sell? And then, you know, like Tommy said, put something in there, like a repercussion in there. No. Because here's, that's on us to figure yeah. out, and that's that's a lot of work. Right, and here's the yeah. other thing too: you have a private road with two houses. You put a third house on there, that becomes a subdivision in R three, right? Well, three lots, three Creates lots within a five-year period becomes a subdivision. Right. Yeah. Yes. You can't do more than. Uh, so. The problem is, is if we allow it to. Think about all the water. Like, what happens to all the water? Okay, great. It's all gravel. Okay? You don't have to tar it. You don't have to put in culverts. You don't have to do all that. So what happens to all those, you know? And it's three lots. That? It's three lots a year? No. Three lots in a five-year. Five year. Yeah, three lots in a five-year period. Five the third lot period. creates the subdivision. Yes. So, so then say that you put in two, two houses, and then two years later you come in and you put two more houses in. Kind of, wouldn't that be? Unless, unless it's... <laughs> Now we're going to get start getting into the weeds with the subdivision law, but unless um, it, if those lots have been deeded to family members, then they're not considered lots in a subdivision. But even if a family member decides to sell a lot within a five-year period of getting it, then it kicks the subdivision law in. <laughs> um, or if you have three lots that you just want to subdivide, then that's a subdivision. Um, there's many avenues that the whole subdivision issue can take. Mm. I've got one in front of me in another town right now where they split a bunch of lots off, and three of them was to a mother, a daughter, and a son. The mother sold her parcel off six years ago, um, and the son and the daughter want to sell their parcels now, and that's <clears throat> both within a five-year period, so now they're in a subdivision situation. Um, they can't just sell those lots off. So mm. it, get, it can get very complicated, but it's three um, within a five-year period. That's, that's mm -hmm. really the basis. Okay. Anything else? I'm good. All right. Thanks. Thanks, James. Uh, one more public comment session to any resident or property owner who would like to come up and uh, talk about anything relating to the planning board. Hi, I'm Paul Amatucci. I live at 12 Perry's Way in Berwick. Uh, off Route 4, which has been very popular tonight. A uh, lot going on on Route 4, not, uh, not things that the local uh, residents and property owners are really happy about, as I talk to my neighbors. Um, I was happy to hear that there is a limit on the number of permits for growing and storefront. Uh, that's going to happen and cut off in June, and, and that's great. Um, the fact is, the concern is that this, this area, um, which was lovely residential, uh, is now becoming, you know, I live like two-tenths of a mile from the new entrance to Kine Farm. Um, it's just right there. And then I'm looking this way on the right, and what am I seeing? I'm seeing the Robarge place on Pond Road, which just sold 15 acres, and they're going to put a uh, massive growing facility in there with two huge barns. 
They've already contacted some of the abutting neighbors, asking them to buy their property out at fantastically high profit. So all of this um, going on just makes us very concerned about this whole process of, you know, uh, the term that uh, you'll forgive me for it, that, uh, that came to my mind was, you know, Route 4 is becoming Little Havana. I mean, you know, uh, you know, you got a pot shop, you know, anywhere you turn. And, you know, I understand the place for medical marijuana, and I understand that we have a state law, and the state is, is doing this, and the state is allowing it, and that's great. You know, I, I can't, you know, that's pushing water uphill. I can't do it. But the fact is, I'm in, I'm in the situation now where I can see that Robarge house I can see those 15 acres from my front door. And I know, I, I, and thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for your comments about odor, because odor and marijuana are tied together. We have, uh, I've done a little research on this, that uh, the odor of marijuana is a huge factor in Colorado. It's a huge factor in California. And when that smell escapes, it's like, you know, there's been a skunk convention. I mean, it is really bad. So, you know, these are things that we really have to take seriously. And one of the things I'm concerned with, particularly when we're talking about odors and, and, and smell in the area, particularly nice, pristine residential areas, is uh, so, so the odor does come out. They didn't do a good job. So what do we do? We fine them. <coughs> well, these are pretty expensive cash crops. So they pay their fines and they don't do it. And we still have the odor. I mean, how do, how do we fight that? Right, so, Brooke, I, I know you're going to roll here. I am. So I am. So one thing, Al, one thing is uh, licensing. So every year, they're, that my, we're working on it right now, is every year they have to come back to the to select board and it's every year re up for a license. So it'll be a public hearing every time. And if there's odor, if there's code, code issues verified by the code enforcement officer, they're not getting their license. Or if you have an active one that's not corrected, you can serve them a notice to cease, cease and cease order. So just to let you know, our process now, so if we're driving down the road and we can smell it, they do get a letter from us or a phone call, and they have to fix the odor. Or if but a neighbor complains if about the odor. Complaint, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But usually we drive those roads enough, especially I do, that I catch it. Um, but by then, if I'm driving down and smelling it, I guess it's already too late. So I get where you're saying. So, I, yeah, yeah, and you know, the, it, the whole issue also is security. I mean, they're targets. As soon as you've, they know what's in there, and they know that you know if they could break in and and uh, and steal it, you know, that's that's a pretty pretty expensive cash cash theft that they're making more so than knocking over a Cumberland Farms. So a person the security in them jeopardizes the security is huge. Users. And it's not reissued. Does that mean the use stops under a cease and desist kind of a scenario? Ask one more time. If they're in violation and they fail to remedy the violation, they come before the State and the and the town are both just the town. The town. Just the town. They come before yeah. the town for an annual license, and the board of selectmen notes that they are in violation, and they refuse to issue the license. Is that a cease and desist on their operation? Yes. Okay. Anything else, sir? Well, just did you see the news this morning? It was in New Mexico. They had a couple of large grow-out facilities, and people turned over to the side, and they saw this big purple haze in I the did sky. See that. It was all purple, and they didn't know what it was. Well, what it was, it was the grow-out facility, the way it was reacting with the LED lighting, mm -hmm. and it was throwing this huge purple 
Phew. Purple haze. I don't think that's what Jimi Hendrix came up with. I don't think he was saying about marijuana. Yeah, I don't think he knew about LED I really appreciate you coming out, and I'm glad that you came out because we need some more of your neighbors to come out to these. With well, you know, I'm I'm kind of the Pied Piper. We I've talked to an awful lot of my neighbors. I called today to find out whether this, or I actually looked at the site and then called to find out whether this was going to be uh, on the agenda yeah. uh, on the site of the Robarge property. Is it Robarge in South Berwick or is it in Berwick? Berwick. Oh, it's in Berwick. Yeah. So uh, They haven't come before you yet. No, they haven't. They're not there yet. So, yeah, I think when that comes up, you're going to see a whole lot more of my okay. neighbors here. So, All right, please uh, do. Yeah. Please have them come out. We'll right. pack the room. Yeah, thank uh, you. Thank you. Sure, quickly. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, we have public comment sessions still open, so yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to address um, an existing ordinance. It's um, it's in the cultivation 8256B. Um, so your ordinance right now states that um, for cultivation of marijuana or products containing marijuana or sold on the same site, the cultivation area shall be no greater than 50% of the yeah, total. That, yeah, that's. Oh, uh, struck? Yeah, okay. it's going to be it's struck. It's a proposed out. change. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that was out there. That's yeah. great, thank you. It's a, make sure you come out to the, uh, when we do have the public hearing on the land use ordinance amendments, come out and get a, you'll have an advanced copy of that on the town's website. Okay, that's good. That would seem yeah. a little out of, didn't make a lot of sense to me, but thank you. Anybody have anything else? Lee Jay? One more thing, Mr. Oh. Chairman. Um, SMPDC, in conjunction with the Natural Resource Council of Maine, um, is going to be putting on a workshop on January 23rd saw that. Um, at the Sanford Town Hall, um, and we will be talking about um, solar, um, not the small solar panels that people put on their homes, but um, with the governor's initiative with um, net zero increase in energy and all of the energy issues that they're dealing with, um, there is a big push for large solar operations mm -hmm. to come to the area. Um, 20 acres, 5 megawatts, very large operations. We are working with them and others on um, not only talking and educating folks on the issue, um, not from the standpoint of this can't happen, but from the standpoint of how do we make it happen and how do we make sure there are safeguards. Um, but we're also working with them towards the development of a statewide um, land use ordinance that um, folks could adopt locally. So if you are available, um, contact my office. Um, Kelsey Pelton in my office is um, spearheading that program. And um, I think that they have some good speakers that will be available that evening to talk about um, large scale solar operations. All right. And then I had just one more thing. The chairman of the Board of Selectmen mentioned at last evening's meeting that he received the, the Great Bay Estuary Annual Report. Mm -hmm. Do you people get that at, at the Southern Maine Regional? I believe we do. Um, you I don't personally get it, so. We are not a paying member into that group, but right. we are in that group. Mm -hmm. Tom indicated that he would read it, but if you guys are putting a set of eyes on it, if there's anything in there that's relevant sure. to what Berwick needs to know, sure. if you could pass that back through James to get it to the board here. That, that all deals with the water quality of the Salmon Falls right, exactly. River. Yep. Next on the agenda is the adjournment. I motion for adjournment of January 19th planning board meeting. 16th. 16th, excuse me. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor?